Hi guys, welcome back to ADSR Machine Tutorials. Today and for the next couple of weeks we're going to start looking at some of the effects in Machine. We've not really covered many of these in great detail as of yet. So today I'm going to be looking at this section up here. They're kind of split into sections. So we've got this first five effects are kind of dealing with dynamics and transients and stuff. And then we've got an EQ and filter. Uh, and then we've got some modulation effects, some reverb effects and some more kind of creative sort of mangling kind of tools really uh, and then some distortion effects at the bottom so I'm going to look at start off here look at this compressor and I've got this loop from this is drop squad expansion pack and this dub love kit this loop so we're going to start off looking at some group compression and I was going to deal with this group as if it was like a group of drums. So I might mute out some of these synth noises. Maybe that crash has a really long tail on it. So we're just dealing with these sounds. So let's go over to our mixer view here. We can just hit tab. And we can go to the mixer view. And I'm in group level as well here, like if I wanted to go to the sound levels, I'll click on one of these mixer channels and then I get this, these are like the samplers. So all these are all the individual hits really. Go to the group level and then I can deal with this group as a whole and I can pro process all of these sounds that we see here, I can process them all together. And compression is a great way of dealing with dynamic range on a group. So. Well, I'll mute this compressor for now. Look at the level on this group level. There's quite a lot of dynamic range there. There's not loads. I mean, it could be worse, but you notice the levels kind of jumping up and down. So if we wanted to control that a little bit, we can do that using a compressor. So let's turn this compressor back on here. The first control we've got is this threshold. So this is the level at which the compressor will start to work once anything that exceeds the threshold will start to get compressed. So if you watch when I bring this threshold down, more of that signal is getting compressed. So anything above the threshold is gonna get compressed. You can double click this uh, and it kind of resets it. So, and next to that, we've got this GR gain reduction. So this is how much gain reduction is being applied to the signal so as you, as you pull down the threshold you get larger amounts of gain reduction. We've got a couple of other controls over here so we've got this knee so to the right we're going to get a fast knee to the left we're going to get a soft knee so a fast knee is just how abruptly the compressor will start to work once the threshold has been reached so anything above this threshold is going to start getting compressed and then this is how quickly that compressor the onset how abruptly that's going to start working we also have an attack control here so this is how fast the compressor reacts on the incoming signal so the more we dial it to the right the slower it will become the, the more we dial it to the left the faster it becomes so knee and attack both work in similar ways knee here sometimes on compressors you have a hard knee or a soft knee and in this case we have a percentage of the knee and attack we have we deal with attack in time so we can see an ms there as we pull it down that stands for milliseconds so they're both doing quite similar things but attack we have more control over how fast that compressor kicks in we also have release so release is the time it will take to stop compressing after the input signal falls below the threshold so and then we also have this amount here and so the amount or the ratio is once this threshold has been exceeded and we're applying gain reduction to the signal this is how much gain reduction we're going to apply normally on a compressor you'll see a ratio control in machine we have percentage instead so 100 percent we're going to just be compressing that signal a lot more once it exceeds the threshold and then if we pull it down to you know so 5%, we're not going to be compressing the signal very much once it's exceeded the threshold. So, an example, hardly any gain reduction. Pull this up, loads more gain reduction. And then I've got this fast attack now, fast release. You can see what this gain reduction is doing. It's giving you an idea of how that's working. A slow attack. So 
a release. Fast knee. Soft knee. And then we also have featured here this kind of gain output. So uh, we're going to be affecting the, the, the kind of the level of that signal. So if we're going to be reducing it by 4 or 5 dB, then we can boost this back up. Or if we're sort of increasing it too much, then we can just control this kind of output of this compressor here with this gain. So say if I was going to start compressing this group, look at its level here. Mute it. We've boosted the level quite a bit there, the compression we can apply, so I can then dip it again. So you're not boosting or kind of decreasing the level of something you're going to compress too much. And the great thing about that as well is you can A, B it, so you can mute it and unmute it to see, really hear the effect of compression you're applying to it. So. So the way I would apply compression to a drum group is I'd usually start with a compressor to just compress the peaks of the signal. So generally when you're dealing with drums, you kind of want a slow attack on a compressor because you want to let the transient of the drums through the, the start, the attack point of those drums, the punch. You want to let that through. You don't want to start compressing that. You want to keep that nice and punchy. But when I'm dealing with peaks on a signal, I'm only going to be compressing by 1 dB or so and it might not even be compressing all the time. It's just those those peaks where there's, the level's kind of jumping up and down a little bit. We just want to control them. So when I'm using a compressor to compress the peaks, I have a very fast attack and release time set. So push some out. Up. And let's have a look at this level over here. Mute it. So what we're doing there is just catching the peaks. We're still getting plenty of punch on the drums and stuff like that. Not really needed to tweak this gain very much and you've seen those peaks jumping up and down there we just controlled them a little bit so normally I wouldn't have the amount kept as 100% I'd probably have it a lot lower but it's just so you can really hear how the compressor is acting a little bit more here so but 100% to just control peaks and stuff like that is probably a bit extreme with that compressor set up let's add another compressor now and let's just deal let's just kind of beef the sound up a little bit because you know, compressors can be functional to control dynamic range of a signal, but they can also be used to sort of add a bit of warmth and a bit of character to the sound. So one parameter on the compressor I've not kind of really discussed there was this this kind of classic here. If I'm loading up this second compressor. You actually get this option to change this from classic. So classic's more like a modern style compressor and uh, probably faster attack and release times, I guess. Whereas this feedback, this is more kind of like a vintage sort of sound compressor. So we could use a second compressor to just bring a bit of vibe to those drums. So I might compress by a little bit more here with a slow attack. So I'm gonna let the, the punch and the transient of the drums through the start kind of point of all those drums and a fast release. Start bringing this threshold down. So what our compressor's doing. Pull the gain down. that feedback control does give quite a significantly different sound to the classic if I switch now from feedback to classic see how much cleaner the classic sound is like
So you're actually getting it's kind of altering the sound without even really applying any gain reduction. Whether it's right for those drums or not, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. So let's have a look at some of the other kind of dynamic effects we've got here. So let's look at this maximizer, because this is another really cool uh, dynamic effect, really. This is kind of like a limiter. The limiter will work in similar ways as compressor, but it just is much more, we'll just compress at a much higher ratio. So I'll show you what the limit is going to do very quickly. You know, it's kind of very extreme compression. So you look at that signal there. So a maximizer works in a similar way to a limiter, but it has a slightly different sound and it's just a great way of just bringing a bit of vibe to some drums. So, so we've only got a couple of controls on the maximizer. We've got curve and this controls the knee of this maximizer. So uh, to the right, again, we're going to get a very sharp, fast knee. To the left, it's going to be a lot slower and we've got this amount. So we've got a mix control, basically, how much maximizer we're going to apply to the sound. And also turbo, which just kind of intensifies the effects. So. You hear the drums getting crunched there. What it's doing to them. Just muting it and unmuting it, we can see what we're going to bring to the sound there. So I love putting those maximizers. I love putting that on the kind of drum group really, and it just can add a real nice amount of vibe used in the right way. So it's a couple of uh, effects units that we've looked at there. Going to get stuck into a lot more of these over the coming weeks. So uh, make sure you come back and check us out for the rest of those videos. Any questions you had about this tutorial today, please get in touch, and also get yourself over to our website, MachineSkills.com. Uh, tons more tutorials featured on there for Native Instruments Machine and thanks for watching. Alright, cheers.